probably buried unspoken for many years in the minds of American women. It was a strange stirring, a sense of dissatisfaction, a yearning that women suffered in the middle of the 20th century in the United States. Each suburban housewife struggled with it alone. As she made beds, shot for groceries, matched slipcover material, ate peanut butter sandwiches with her children, chauffeured Cub Scouts and brownies, lay beside her husband at night, she was afraid to ask even of herself the silent question, is this all? In the 1960s, the women of the United States struggled with an unspoken, unnamed sense of dissatisfaction that couldn't be explained. They had been taught all their lives to live and unquestionably accept the lifestyles as happy housewives that society expected of them. They were afraid to say anything about their unhappiness because they thought the problem was them, not society. Betty Friedan was the first to address the problem with no name in her novel, The Feminine Mystique, in which she conducted a survey of her former college classmates. The identification of this problem sparked the feminism movement. The following year, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was passed by Congress and signed by President Johnson. It was proposed more than one year ago by our late and beloved President, John F. Kennedy. It received the bipartisan support of more than two-thirds of the members of both the House and the Senate. An overwhelming majority of Republicans, as well as Democrats, voted for it. It has received the thoughtful support of tens of thousands of civic and religious leaders in all parts of this nation. And it is supported by the great majority of the American people. The purpose of this law is simple. It does not restrict the freedom of any American so long as he respects the rights of others. It does not give special treatment to any citizen. It does say the only limit to a man's hope for happiness and for the future of his children shall be his own ability. It does say that there are those who are equal before God shall now also be equal in the polling booths in the classrooms, in the factories, and in hotels and restaurants and movie theaters and other places that provide service to the, the public. The bill outlawed discrimination against African Americans and women, specifically in the work environment. The section banning discrimination based on sex was added last minute by Congressman Howard Smith because he opposed civil rights legislation and figured it would be rejected because it provided equal rights for women. Even though the bill did not solve the problem, women were gradually achieving the equality they wanted, such as through birth control. The consequences of sexual relations between men and women were clearly unfair. If a relationship resulted in an unplanned pregnancy, the woman was left with the responsibility. In the early 1900s, a longtime nurse, Margaret Sanger, fought to make birth control available to all women. Before birth control, women were putting their health at risk and suffering poverty because of the many children that they had. Also, many women went to extremes to prevent pregnancy or terminate their existing pregnancy. These methods were legal and could kill the woman receiving them. Even though birth control was legalized in 1960, many states prohibited the sale of it, even to married couples. Religious groups like the Roman Catholic Church were angered by birth control because it went against their beliefs. A positive thing that was inspired by the legalization of birth control was the Planned Parenthood organization founded by Margaret Sanger. Planned Parenthood provided contraceptives and other health services to women and men, advanced access to family planning, but they mainly focused on the development of, birth, of the birth control pill. The invention of the birth control pill let women feel more in power and led them to want to be in control of other issues. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission specified in the Civil Rights Act is an independent law enforcement agency that enforces laws against workplace discrimination. The EEOC outlaws discrimination based on an individual's race, national origin, religion, sex, age, perceived intelligence, disability such as alcoholism, and retaliation for reporting and or opposing a discriminatory practice. It is empowered to file discrimination suits against employers on behalf of alleged victims and to settle claims of discrimination brought against federal agencies. Change the face of American politics until women are not only equal. 
To further address the issue, on June 30, 1966, 28 women and men attended the Third National Conference of the Commission of, on the Status of Women. Founded and organized by Betty Friedan, the National Organization for Women, or NOW, was formed. It's the largest feminist organization in the United States, consisting of approximately 500,000 members. The core issues that the organization sought to confront were abortion rights and reproductive issues, violence against women, constitutional equality, promoting diversity, ending racism, lesbian rights, and economic justice. Many of the members were involved with the civil rights movement against racial segregation and were inspired to fight for their own rights as well. They used similar tactics and methods as those used during the civil rights movement. During the 1920s, although the 19th Amendment prohibited the denial of voting rights due to gender, a woman named Alice Paul was dissatisfied with the progress. She argued that this amendment alone would not successfully end discrimination. She drafted the Equal Rights Amendment in 1923, presented as the Lucretia Mott Amendment. It stated that men and women shall have equal rights throughout the United States in every place subject to its jurisdiction. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. In 1961, feminists demanded that the ERA be passed and won a hearing with senators to discuss it. At the same time, in August, women around the country took part in a nationwide women's strike for equality, demanding full equality. Friedan said of the strike, all kinds of women's groups all over the country will be using this week on August 26th, particularly, to point out those areas in women's lives which are still not addressed. For example, a question of equality before law. We are interested in the Equal Rights Amendment. Hearings of the ERA began in 1970. The ERA failed to receive the required number of ratifications before the deadline assigned by Congress of June 30, 1982, so it was not adopted. However, feminists today still actively fight for the amendment to be passed. Too much to go back and pretend 